Hey YouTube, that's the 781. So, next up on the chopping block, Craftsman LT1000. I know, very different. Um, if you remember the pressure washer video, the, the one where I helped the kid out, this is that mower from his house. Uh, it's been sitting for years, hasn't run, um, don't know what it needs or what's wrong with it. Uh, I know it needs a battery <laughs> and possibly a seat, but, um, we said we get it winched up and uh, get into it. And giddy up. It's not the fastest way to get in the shop. Like a glove. All right, so she's up in the air. Um, let's get some initial first impressions. Um, this bumper is not right. Don't know how it's supposed to be, but um, it's not tight, it wiggles. Uh, steering felt fine. Most of the tires have air. Um, oh, hey, <laughs> that's supposed to have a clip in it. Um, front one has a clip. Deck is loaded with garbage, but doesn't seem too bad. This wheel, tires aren't dry rotted. This one feels like it's got air in it. This one's definitely a little bit low, but again, don't see any cracks. Um, okay. <laughs> Is that an optional? No, that doesn't, this doesn't even go to this mower. Well, I don't know, but um, yeah. That's taking a whack. I think I actually have one of these too. That's also on there loosely. Um, gonna have to jack it up to actually really assess the front end. As far as motor, I don't see a bunch of mouse house popping out anywhere, but we are going to absolutely pull the cover. Is the engine even free? Oh, okay, so the engine moves. Yeah, like I said, they don't, um, they don't know how long this has been sitting. They don't know if it had any issues or has any issues. It doesn't look that old. I mean, look at the carb. I'd say, I mean, they were estimating five or six years. So yeah, that sounds about right. It was sitting indoors, which means nothing for, you know, mice and carburetors. Why is that thumping? Oh, good thing I didn't just dump gas into it and try, oh yeah, yeah. So fuel tank has been off. Uh, this thing's gonna have all sorts of weird surprises. Ooh! Somebody has been in here. I wonder if they were trying to get it going before they uh, sold it. Because that looks to me like someone threw a brand new carb on this thing and then tried to. But why would it be disconnected? I don't know. Um, what do you wanna do next? We have to pull the deck off. Check the pulleys, both the drive pulleys and the deck pulleys, and check the front end. So, why don't we try getting it up in the air and uh, shake the front end down, kill two birds at once. Well, I took the hood off and uh, got it hooked up to the winch, and then I saw this little beauty. Where do you suppose that goes? If I had to guess, it'd be the kill wire. Why is that off? <coughs> curiouser and curiouser. So I got the deck lowered down. I'm about to just pop it off. So I'm gonna kill two birds at once. Lift it up, have the deck down. So you'll get the idea. Thing is just full of surprises. What did you hit? <laughs> that one's even a little uh, kitty wampus, huh? Oh well, add it to the list. So I can't even get this deck off without getting this bracket somewhat straighter. Yeah. Come on. Did that give us enough? I think so. Come on. Oh, you're right there. Okay. <sighs> now I doubt the other side is going to be any easier. Oh, well, unfortunately, this side is so mangled, I can't get this out without straightening this out. And I don't want to straighten this out 
hunched over like Quasimodo here. So I have more of these clips. I'm just going to slice this end off. Maybe I have to slice the other end off, see if I can sneak it out. And yeah, that cut off pretty easily. Come on. Yep, there you go. This must have been impressive to see. Come on. Can't, can't be serious. All right, everything's off except for the engagement cable. So up Periscope. Let's see what we got going on. Here's another look at that. This is just, this is supposed to be perfectly straight right here. <laughs> that's not thin, that's not thin stuff. This is just like, what did you hit? Where's the body? Oh, anyway. So, getting a quick look at the drive belt. Looks good. What about these pulleys? That feels good, no, no grumbling. That noise is just it rubbing up against the belt. That feels good too. All right, uh, plenty of grass. Uh, not the worst though. Anytime I get these up, I try to, you know, take some time with a little screwdriver and break that dirt debris up and blow it out with a blow gun. Um, deck wise. Ooh, that's quiet. That's quiet. That's the brake on there. That feels good too. We might be getting lucky on this one. I had to say something. Oh. All right, it moved, but the whole deck moved with it. And now that I'm looking, why is there a gap under the back? I bet you that blade is bent to, bent to hell. Uh, let's see. Well, before I flip this thing over and uh, make a mess everywhere, I'm gonna take a few minutes with the shop back and turn you back on in a second. And that's actually looking much better. I don't see any, uh, any rot holes. This is a weird, I don't know if that's a crack or what, but I'm curious to see what it looks like on the other side. It's just like a weird lump in the metal. Anyway. Yeah, let's flip it over and uh, see what we're dealing with. And sure enough, this blade is completely bent. It's actually not in that bad of shape otherwise either. But, oh well, yeah, that one's got a couple of chips out of it. I'm gonna do two new blades. Deck's in great shape. Guys, what happened here? What, is this like a, from the factory? deformation and uh forming like that's just like folded metal i mean i'm glad it's not a hole but just a little weird i mean i don't know if any of you guys have ever seen that before so all right now we know what we need to do for the deck let's turn our attention to these beauties now there's many ways to skin a cat but i have found big adjustable wrench and the right attitude will usually get things straightened out no problem doesn't have to be perfect but <clears throat> I like to have it as close as possible how are we looking actually not bad just this little uh... There we go. I think that's acceptable. What do you guys think? How's it looking? Yeah, a little bit more. There's an old saying, good enough is good enough. You keep touching it, you're gonna make it worse. All right, how about the other side? Now this one's gonna be a treat. The term compound bends, yeah, it's thrown around a lot these days, yeah, Jesus, how could this thing have had the momentum, <laughs> I gotta reposition you guys, like how fast were you going, and there's no 
damage to the deck, which I thought is also interesting. Because wouldn't you think, you know, it's kind of, it would start there and then crumple back to here. I'm surprised the airbags didn't go off. Christ. Uh, this is actually bending pretty nicely. Uh, I should have started with this one. Nope. Uh, might have to break out the torch. This is not going as smooth as the other side. Or maybe a hammer would help. At least it would boost my morale, if anything. Turn you back on in a second. All right, this might just be me being uh, too particular, but I think I can pop off two carriage bolts, one on each side, and this bottom half might drop down, and then I can put this in the vise and really do a proper job on it. That's my hope. What do you think? It's wiggling. I might have to loosen the top bit. Oh, it's it's actually keyed in there. Well, that's just maddeningly unhelpful. How far do you want to take this? Okay, so you see these little notches? They're in the front and the back, so it kind of sandwiches the two plates together. Easiest way to pivot from here, take these two off. They're no nuts. They're sort of threaded into the frame. And the other two from this side. And I might even have to loosen that center nut. Just to tickle, just to give this enough wiggle room to slide it out. Let's see what happens. All right, got that middle nut broke loose. And I don't want to go all the way out, like I said. Just trying to... Hey, I was just about to get a pry bar. Yeah, look at this. There was no way I was going to get this to a point where I was going to be happy. <sighs> but I haven't been happy for a while. Anyway, to the vice. Somewhere... I actually have an adjustment tool for when these decks get bent out of shape. I haven't used it in a while. Oh, perfect. That's much better. Well, I'm gonna fiddle, fiddle with this thing. You guys don't need to watch me hammer and bang and I'll turn you back on when it's looking better. All right. That's where I'm going to call it. If I get this thing any straighter, it'll be John Wayne. Let's check it back on. And after. Now remember what I said about acceptable tolerances. It is going to be perfect for what I needed to do. All right. How about we uh, lower it down a bit, grease the front end, check the deck back up under it, and then uh, check out the engine. Yeah, it's actually been a couple days. Nice new blades came in. Give the deck a good uh, scraping. Really in good shape under here. Surprising. But um, yeah, get a couple new blades slapped on. And bet you're wondering why I'm putting high lift blades on instead of mulching blades. I have a plan for this mower. And now that we have two new unbent blades, I'm just gonna give it the old, is anything bent test. And that's where you line it up, see if everything is still, still level. And everything here feels pretty good. It's just a hair different right there. But it's also a hair different there too, so. This is called good enough for government work.
And I'm just kind of tucking this deck underneath. Now, remember I mentioned that these are missing the clips, and indeed they are. But I couldn't get these off. I got to give points for creativity here. That is, it's the same on this side too. I mean, they're not coming out. <laughs> <sighs> so now at this point, some of you may be wondering, why have you just put new blades and cleaned up the deck on something you haven't even heard run? Well, to that I answer, it's not easy living with ADD. You try it. Can't get a thing done, at least at once. Um, no, the answer is, this is a good 42-inch deck. Um, worst case scenario, this thing is full of great parts. Um, so I can definitely take this deck off, use it for something else. But... You are correct. I do want to hear this thing run. So let's start with checking the oil. And boy, isn't she full. It is way up there. Let's give it a smell. Oh yeah, that is 10W30 and 87 octane, maybe 86. <sighs> Chock full. Chock full of gas and oil. So let's get her draining. First thing, because I don't want to, it's already leaking. Lovely. I don't want to start it with the gas oil mix, obviously. So let's get that going. Ugh, can't wait to see how thin this is. Also, is the whole thing loose? Sometimes they are. This one doesn't feel it. Oh, yeah. Comes shooting out like that when it's ice cold. You know it's thin. Beautiful. Oh, we'll let that drain off and probably get this cover off. And got the last bolt out. So let's see what mysteries lie underneath. I honestly don't think it's going to be bad because I didn't see Mouse House poking out, but I also know somebody's been here. So. And gorgeous. No mice, no mises. But the question remains. Why did somebody disconnect the kill wire? The tab is right here. Maybe it lost spark? I don't know. I'm gonna leave it hooked up for now. And uh, once this is done draining, I'm gonna put some fresh oil in it, put a new battery in, finally start seeing whether this thing cranks or what. But since this is already half unbolted and just sitting here, let's see what's going on with the gas tank. Because it was not connected. Is it empty? What? Seriously? That is, that's like squirrel. If any of you guys know, this has happened to me before, believe it or not, you can see the teeth marks. If any of you guys know what it is about certain plastic tanks, uh, the mice or the chipmunks or the squirrels or whatever, oh well. I'm pretty sure I actually have one of these tanks somewhere. Let me take a quick peek. All right, so the plot is thickening here. Take a look at this hose. It's basically petrified, but you can tell it was spent most of its life at a 90 degree angle. Now look at the, the setup here. It's just two flat mounts, just like this. This is an optional style tank. So the tank that I have is wrong. I mean, in the sense of it's not that tank, but it's right in the sense of, I think this is the tank that belongs in this unit. This is, I mean, I've seen people buy them for the larger capacity. I think that's a gallon. I think that's two. Don't quote me. But you can see this will drop right into place. Same exact spot. And this fuel line basically lines right up with it. So I don't know. Did they, were they trying to go from a different tank at one point? Like, Unfortunately, he's passed away, and I, I'm never going to get my answers, but that's aggravating. I wonder if that can be fixed. I bet you can. Some PC7 epoxy and, like, a patch piece. 
I might keep that because <laughs> that's a good tank to have. Um, but I do have this one hanging around that I don't have a cap to, but this cap looks fine. So I should have looked at it before I uh, started standing up on my soapbox. But yeah, this cap will be fine. They both take the same cap. So, all right, fine. Gas tank sorted. This just finally stopped dripping. So get this cleaned up, get some oil in it, start answering more questions. So this motor is a perfect example of why I always keep used motor oil around. Because number one, this came out of my mower, which there's no problems with it. It's just routine maintenance. Um, it's going to serve two purposes. It's going to flush out the gassy, mixy, crappy oil out of this motor. But it's also going to serve great as test oil because we don't even know if this thing runs. Plus at $12 a quart, I don't feel like experimenting that way if you catch my drift. So now that I have it filled with fresh oil, I'm a little curious about the carb. You know, it probably would have been smart to catch that in a cup. Thought of that just as it started dripping. But my question is, was the old carb leaking or is this carb leaking? So now that it's drained, I think what I'm gonna do is back off these nuts and just slide the carb forward. I've already cut this hose that's hard as a rock and petrified, which by the way, is the, you know, comes with the Chinese kit special hose. You can tell a mile away. Wow, that's hard though. Um, gonna fill this with, with, yeah, with oil. Fill it with gas, see if it drips, and if not, I'm gonna slide it back on and try to run it. You know, in all honesty, my gut feeling here is that this is leaking. And the reason I say that is the tank was bone dry. Yes, I know that it was, uh, you know, swapped tank or whatever, but there was fuel in this carb. So it came from somewhere. So either I'm wrong and this carb is fine, or I'm right and I'm gonna prevent fuel from entering the engine. Can't prove anything here, so we just have to experiment and find out. So it's been a couple hours. I actually switched to my gravity tank just because I really wanted some pressure on it, and I don't see any signs of leakage. Not to say this isn't gonna be a problem, so just for testing purposes, I think it's fine to move forward, and then uh, I will start it up, to start the test again when I actually get the fuel tank hooked up with a proper gallon or so pushing down on it. Just never, try, I don't trust these Nickies. Okay, fresh battery, clutch is locked. Give it some choke. Place your bets. <laughs> I don't think we have spark. Shocker. All right, now I've disconnected the kill wire that was already disconnected. Let's give it another go. <laughs> Nothing. I'm getting plenty of fuel. It is spitting the fuel out. All right, let's check things properly. Well, safe to say I think we're getting fuel, so... Well, that looks like a... Chinesium spark plug if I've ever seen one. Honestly, it wasn't even that tight. And sure enough, she is soaked. All right. Let's check and see if we have spark now. Actually, that's not Chinesium. Champion, 7-1. ECO? This doesn't seem right. Anyway, we'll get back to that. But I don't think this is the right plug. All right, spark checker. Don't get, don't get distracted. All right, hopefully you can see right here. I have a, it's an actual gap tester. So it's going to not only tell us if we have spark, if we have strong spark, 
I've shut off the lights so you and I can both see. So, fire in the hole. <laughs> Interesting. We do have spark. And really quickly, out of curiosity, I just hooked up the kill wire, so. Great. So now we know there's no reason that wire should be disconnected. All right, we have spark. We may or may not have fuel, but since we're right here, let's check the compression. And got the compression tester hooked up where you can see it. So let's give it a crank. I don't think there's a compression issue. I just want to check the basis. Fire on the hole. What do we got? Wow. <laughs> okay. A little higher than I think it would have been. But I um, wonder if these valves need some adjusting. Actually, no, that would make it worse. I don't know. Let me stop overcomplicating things and throw a, a, a known good plug in and we'll retrace our steps. And on this, it's going to be the Champion RC12YC. That's basically every single cylinder in tech, I'm pretty sure. But the best part is, if I'm not, the people in the comments will let you guys know and never let me forget it. So. Get this tightened down, get the plug wire hooked up, and uh, we'll try it again. Just for kicks, let's give it a little sniff of laughing gas. See if it is the, the fuel. runs it sounds decent and it shuts off by the key so i'm checking off all the boxes caught in the act just turn the fuel back on and good thing i did Ugh, garbage all right well i honestly i don't want to say i knew that was going to happen but i was very very suspicious that that was going to happen so let's get this pulled off open her up on the bench see if we can uh rebuilder in all honesty i am happy <laughs> i um i don't know i really really suspected this from the beginning and this just kind of confirms my suspicion because that would have been terrible if this thing ended up leaving uh-oh there was some crap in there anyway this thing ran well but uh yeah imagine this thing leaves and then next time he shuts it off fills the crankcase with gas and then kaboom because who would check the oil after they got a got a mower that was just serviced? Even though you're supposed to check it every time. I digress. But yeah, let's see what we got going on in here. Oof. This thing, I mean, you guys saw. It ran great. It idled. But I mean, the, the schmoo don't lie. Come on. Shouldn't be this tough. Why? What's holding it on here? I am free. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um <clears throat> What are we thinking? Could I rebuild it with a Nikki kit? Yes. It's not even this gasket that I'm worried about. It's this one. This is where they usually swell and overflow. And Oh, there's even crap in there, too. Look at that. So, is it actually just the crap on the needle? 
this time oh yeah i don't know if you guys can see where is it there so i think i will i am going to clean this up not gonna ultrasonic clean it because it was running great clean it up blow it all off nice and clean put a rebuild kit in it and then see what happens all right out with the old in with the new i'll put the part number right here as usual and <clears throat> i really you know i would ultrasonic clean this if we didn't know you know that it ran so well and it literally idled and did beautifully i know i'm probably setting myself up here but i've set myself up worse before just got that to pop into place so the only other thing i found while i was blowing it out is this we'll call it the jet adjustment it's bent and it was screwed out about eight turns believe it or not so we may end up putting a carb on this thing anyway all right what am i forgetting um also check that uh, make sure the bottom of the needle springs back nice nice so i don't know whether it was the needle that failed or if it was the um you know that nikki seal and we may never know but curious to see if it doesn't leak now so let me finish getting this button back up and uh we'll see you on the machine well, scratch that. Despite my best efforts, even just now, if I hold this upside down, I can blow through it. If I wiggle it, I can get it to stop. But then I tap it again, I can blow right through it. So I think the needle has failed. Um, at this point, I just don't trust this carb worth a lick. So I have one on the shelf. Let's put a new one in. Okay, take 103. New carburetor installed. Oop. Hope if you turn the fuel on, right? Well, let's see what happens. I know my opinion isn't really worth a damn but say what you want <coughs> about most chinese carburetors but the people over at hipaa they haven't gotten one of these wrong for me especially i mean as far as these nickies go this is probably my 10th that i've thrown on right out of the box and it's needed nothing no tweaking no adjustments and uh the other several i've heard from i mean it's been a couple of years and no issues no problems but um that's a conversation for a whole nother day. Okay, I'm going to put some new fuel line front to back and probably give this thing a bath. Well, any minute now, those skies are gonna open up and I would really like to give this thing a proper cleaning before I go any further. Also, hey, let's make sure it drives. Let's see if we can get this thing looking a little less fuzzy, a little less scuzzy. And of course I turn on the camera, now it's starting to rain, but look at how nice. 
It's like it was never uh, sitting for years. Everything cleaned up gorgeous. I left the engine cover on loose so I could pull that off. Look at that. See, this is just so much nicer to work on when things are clean. And it's been a couple days just drying in the shop. <coughs> and uh, so yeah, everything came out great. Um, I actually ran this for quite a bit of time after I washed it just to um, you know get everything dry and also assess if and where there were any leaks. And fortunately, there's no leaks. I mean, I know it was all kind of fuzzy scuzzy around the valve cover, but you know, who knows where that came from or how long it's been there. So I am actually not going to, I'm gonna leave well enough alone. Um, not gonna to touch anything. Gonna to put the cover back on, run it the way it is. Um, Cause this mower, is actually going to be off well i'm going to offer it to a friend of mine and uh he might may or may not watch this video so i don't want him to, uh, to spoil the surprise but he just bought a house and i know he's going to be in the market for a ride mower so why not get one all spruced up and uh we'll see if he wants it and if not oh well <laughs> but these bolts are loose for the front bumper so tighten those up and oh yeah still got to grease the front end so again we're going to be going with the green grease love the stuff um question for the other tinkerers and small engine guys out there they make a kit that's sort of, they call it a power steering kit it's basically a needle bearing that goes on the bottom here um i've never used it I, i've wanted to use it but i've had a lot of you guys tell me i should use it have you ever got, have you guys had luck with it installed on your own or for customers or? You know, I, I used it on, uh, sorry, a friend of mine has a John Deere that he, he swears by it now. And he also says that the green grease does the best job of not washing away because he's, He's used a couple other ones. I'm not going to say names because then, you know, they, they light the pitchforks and torches come after you. But um doesn't wash away. He has to physically actually wipe it away, even with a pressure washer. It doesn't go away, the green grease, um, which is fantastic. That's, you know, exactly what you want grease to do, especially here in New England with, uh, you know, not so much for tractors, but <clears throat> with road salt and all that calcium chloride and whatever the hell else they're uh, treating the roads with. You really want... The grease to stay where you want it and we've got the um you know test oil drained out of it so fill it with some good oil wish this had a filter but oh well and uh yeah get the cover back on and see if she'll start again i'm in the middle of finishing up stuff here it is july look at the size of this hail ow gee ow <laughs> Guys, this stuff, right? This is nuts! <laughs> uh, I don't believe it, but I guess I have to. I'm looking right at it. 90 degrees yesterday. Hail today. Welcome to New England. And she's finally all back together. Last up on the list of things that uh, would be nice to get rid of. This seat is, honestly, compared to some of the other ones I've seen, not in the worst shape. However, <coughs> I do have a nice new aftermarket seat. Never been sat upon. Let's swap it on. So far as I can tell, this should be pretty straightforward. This all is going to stay. <coughs> and I think it's just this one adjusting knob. And then you slide it forward out of its uh, bracket or you can just take off the two T50 Torx. They are short and shouldered. And there we go. Now I cannot promise that installation is going to be as elegant, graceful, fun to watch. But we are going to see how easy these holes are to strip out. Nope. Can't even reach them. 
One of you guys want to come through and hold this for me? Please? I can't pay you, but I'll try to make you laugh. Uh, I could do it the proper way, which is bolt it to the seat and then just push down. All right, I'll do that. All right, take two. I should just have to push in and up. Oh, all right. Uh, sometimes we struggle. And we're in. Here it is. Put that back in. Factory. Like we've never, we were never here. All right, she runs, she drives, she's got a new seat. Now I bet you're asking yourself, hey, what did you mean when you said you had a plan for that deck with those high lift blades? Well, bam. That's right, double bagger. For the win. Uh, unfortunately, this, oh yeah, it's sunny now after the hail event. I forgot I need to uh, put a new one of these on there. So, uh, can't win them all, can you? So how about one last cold start after it's been sitting for a week or so? There you have it folks that wraps this one up and i did uh tighten up that bumper she's not going anywhere <sighs> hopefully he likes it <laughs> anyway i want to thank you all again for liking watching commenting subscribing i know this one's getting a little bit long yes i'm gonna hose off the bag or it's been sitting outside um let me know if you guys like the longer ones or if you prefer i keep it short and start cutting these things down a little bit um till next time guys talk to you later if you don't record it, it never happened. <laughs>